Hello, welcome. Today I'd like to do another tool review. Uh, this time it's a Process TC105 cutter. And the reason I wanted to do this one um, was when I bought it fairly recently, I researched everywhere I could, but I could find no information on it whatsoever. No videos of people using it on YouTube, no comments from people who bought it, and even the manufacturer's site where they do show some of their other tools, um, this one is not. So I thought, well, someone else is going to be in the same situation as me, so let's remedy that by at least giving them one opinion and one demonstration of its use. So, let's take a look. Okay, process TC105 cutter. First impressions, it overpriced for what is a plastic cutter. I mean, I knew it was plastic, you know. But as we know, we put hobby in front of anything and it doubles the price. And we continue to pay it. <laughs> in fact, for some hobbyists, the collecting and tools is almost as much fun as the hobby. First impression out of the box, very disappointed in that it's warped. One would hope that I was unlucky and got a bad one, they're not all like this, but I don't know. What do you get? The cutter base, you get a nice little stop, piece like that, which fits, fits into there, you can slide it up and down, and obviously it's to hold your timber against when you cut. Also you get a guide for cutting angles, it goes in the same place, we'll talk about that more a bit later. You get one blade installed and two spare blades. The blades are a simple utility knife snap off blade. To change the blade, simply undo these two screws, pull the blade out, put another one in. That's very simple. You also get a ruler. I've checked it with the vernier against the blade and it's pretty spot on. I can't complain about that. The stop's quite good. It's fully adjustable. It'll go out to close to 110 millimeter. And if you turn it around that way, you can go down to zero. This little thing, um, I've no idea what its purpose is. Very annoying because it sits proud above the um, the cutting deck. You'll notice that there's a slot in the in the uh, base which the blade goes into, which is a bit unusual with most of these because um, most of them have a sacrificial base. You also get four screws. The idea is they want you to screw the kit down at these four holes. One, two, three, four. It's obvious, isn't it? I mean, all the load is going on this point. So they're trying to hold it down and make it solid because it's plastic. And to me, that's very disappointing because this is the piece of kit I bought and this is the bit that should do the job. The handle folds up out of your way. You tend to put it up out of the way um, and fiddle around here and the next thing that happens is bang you've done a, a knuckle. I've already done it so I know. Set of sitting in there firmly like this one does. This one's quite firm and you've got to push it to move it. This one's a bit sloppy. If you're wanting to cut an angle you then got to make sure that you're holding it firmly in place so it doesn't move about on you. Like most of these cutters that are designed with a fixed blade and a guide to give you your um, angle, this is set to 60 degrees at the moment. So if I cut it, now you can obviously see that that isn't 60 degrees. It is in fact actually 30 degrees. Because the blade is cutting at 90 degrees, 
if you set it at 60 degrees you take that off the 90 and it leaves you with 30 and conversely if you set it to 30 degrees you'll end up with a 60 degree cut and so on all right enough with all that as i say the sole reason in life is to be a cutter i'm doing it without screwing it down because as i say this is the way i bought it and to me this is the way it should be tested i will at a later stage put it on a board and re-cut things just to show you if, if and what the difference is the tendency for all these type of cutters is for the blade to run off and one of the reasons i bought this one i reasoned that because it's got a utility knife blade in it which is thicker than the average cutter blades that might stop it from deflecting so much it really doesn't <laughs> db5 walnut which is um, obviously a harder timber and you can see it did you can you see that corner there um, that's why i want you to screw it down but as i said build it so it doesn't do that it's also um, advertises the fact that it can cut up to 30 mil wide depending on the thickness and hardness of the material you're using this is just a little bit of um, particle board so it's quite soft um, but as you can see even that um, The deflection, <laughs> the deflection is quite large. This is 25 mil wide by about one and a half mil thick. So we'll see what it does with that. We get through it, but we had to push really hard. Okay, let's challenge it a bit. Here's this bit of six mil round um, not I'm not sure what it is it's not a particularly hard timber though uh, we'll take this up a bit closer goes through but it splinters it a bit because it crunches right at the end and again you've got that runoff six mil round again but this time it's um, oak, which is a harder timber. And as you can see, if you watch that corner, no wonder they want you to screw it down. Again, pretty sloppy at the end. It splintered all the timber there. I just noticed that when I went through that harder stuff, I've taken a bit out of this slot. Oh, well, it's becoming sacrificial now, isn't it? Um, we'll just try one last piece, a bit of uh, 10 by 2 walnut, walnut being the slightly harder timber and 10 wide, it's a bit wider, goes through it okay, still leaves a bit of a rag, but we've seen enough now, um, we'll stop here and attach this to the board and see how it improves but in the meantime i'd also like to cut some of these sections on my old cutter just to use it as a bit of a yardstick now i just want to touch on this very quickly these are uh, the cheapest of the cutters around it's less than half the price of the tc105 as i mentioned about the cutting deck this is sacrificial and you can see where it's been wearing but it actually comes with a spare one so you just pop this out put this one in so if you need to they also come with um some spare blades plus the one that's in it well, the reason i got frustrated with it was a it didn't have a, a stop and i've made as you can see i've made this rather rudimentary one because of the design you turn the handle to cut your ankle because of that there's only one little screw in the back and i found that it wandered on me and i was getting i wasn't getting square cuts but the one thing i do like about this is it's got a good blade and a good cutting action um comes on four little suction cap feet so it doesn't slide around on you it's unlike the other one 
it doesn't need to be bolted down. All right, so without mucking around, okay, we'll go to the uh, 3x2 Sapelli. Easy. No grunt, no big force. So let's wind it up a notch. Um, this is a 6mm round, again, uh, we used on the other one. It's not hard, but and it just flips through. The difficulty being that the blade depth isn't long and wide enough to, to go all the way through. But it's not ripping it apart like the other one was doing. It's just a knife, and it's not even hard to push. You know, one finger, and it goes through. Very nice cutting action. This is the oak 6mm, which is the harder wood. A bit more pressure required on that one. It went through, and it's just leaving this little rag because the, the blade's not wide enough. But if you compare that with what the TC-105 did, we're in a shredder at all. The difficulty with this one, it won't do the widths that the other one will do, um, because the blade just isn't big enough. Now this is five by five walnut. That goes through beautifully. I mean it leaves a nice clean cut. Um, no rag on the edge. A fair bit of runoff. But it is five by five and it's walnut. Cleaner cut than the TC105 I would suggest. This is 10 by 2 walnut again. So we'll Okay, so nice clean cut again, run off again, but as you can see, took quite a bit of pressure to get it in. Okay, so that's what this one can do. Um, here's a bit of 4mm oak. And oak, as I said, is, is a fairly hard timber. So, I can still cut 4mm oak dowel with one finger. I think that's pretty impressive. Alright, we'll leave this one alone for the moment. Well, it's become apparent that uh, this review is going longer than expected. So I've decided to turn it into two videos. So please join me in the next one when we look at the TC-105 after modification and then I do a complete summer. Thanks for watching.